That's what they say in the South, y'all. Early morning, Larry. Checking in from, uh, let me turn this harsh light off that washes out my face. The face of many scars. We've got, we got the bike accident over here in Idaho. Looks like Frankenstein. We've got the raised eyebrow from the cancer surgery. We've got the vitiligo. The many scars, like the human body is like a battleship that just goes through the ocean getting shot at its whole life. Some of these scars heal, some of them don't. But that's what makes us uh, unique. Uh, we're like old boxers, you know, you see that? Detroit, 1966. You know, wow. But hope everybody's doing great out there. considered uh I've, I've always used the word the muse the muse is our it's been my code word for our own personal relationship with music right like when you're when your muse is healthy as a musician you're in love with music you've got creativity you've got tons of ideas um things you want to do and that muse, when it's all you do, and you don't have a hobby like I like I do, like I don't, you know, music is everything to me. When that muse gets injured, damaged, man, you got you got nothing left to to give because like it could be. Uh, I've been I've many times in my life at age fifty five, I've had periods where my my personal muse was very damaged. It's not doing great right now. I'm kind of in a good mood this morning, but like lately. I just have not been in love with music, and and it, this is this is not unusual for me. It happens all the time. If I work too much, um, a series of events can take me down, you know. Um, but like I get to this point where I just don't want to hear any music. I don't want to play it. I don't. I don't even want it. Like nothing you could put on wouldn't annoy me, right? And it's like. I realized, I, I used to panic when that happened because I thought, well, this is the thing that I love, but I, I don't panic anymore at all. I don't even worry about it because I know how to fix it. And that's just to take a break, man. Like, get away from it. Um, don't sit and try to make it happen. It ain't gonna happen. We've all been through this. You guys out there all know what I'm talking about. And uh, if it don't, if it don't wanna go, don't make it go. Don't try to make it go. And uh, luckily, I've got this whole week off, which has been great. I've got time to, uh, you know, just do other things and not worry about it. And all of a sudden, one day you wake up and all of a sudden, it's all back. Like, you think, oh, shit, I would love to plug P90 into an old Tweety Lux today. I would love to listen to this record. And then all of a sudden, you realize you're back in it. And it's like, it's good. Um... So, if any of you guys out there are struggling with that, this is common shit. Um, you, you can't take the one thing that you love, expect to try to make a living with it, and, and never injure it. When, you, when, you, when the rubber of, of, your, of the thing you love meets the road of trying to make money with it, commerce... There's definitely room for danger. Uh, if you, you know, uh, you can injure the muse. And the muse is a delicate, fragile thing, and I respect it. And, um, but man, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, you know. Uh, but it happens to people, and I'm sure you guys out there can relate. But I wanted to tell you about something uh, that, got, that got me really in a good mood last night when I was, I was just sitting there, uh, watched some TV and my dear friend Dan Huff texted me and sent me this video clip of he's he's making his own solo album you know it I don't know how old Dan is but he's been so busy making everybody else sound great for so long that he's put aside his own musical thing and man he's 
I think maybe um, I every time I make a record, I always put it in his mailbox, and he always says sweet things. He's driving around in his car listening. To me. I think he's one of the only guys I know who still has a CD player in his car. But I think maybe in some offhand way, I might have awakened the ghost in him to to want to make his own record, and I'm so glad I did. He wants to use the Baked Alaska distribution team, and. I knew it was going to be great because it's Dan and everything Dan does is amazing. But this little clip that he sent me last night of him working on his record is just fucking fantastic. Way cooler than any of the shit that I've been able to come up with. And of course, because he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing talent and an unbelievable musician and a fucking great dude. So I'm going to post that little clip. I, have his, I asked him if he wanted me to put it on my channel to get a little buzz going about his record and he said yeah man go ahead if you think it'll help but man dig this how cool this is i'll put it right at the end of this video it's so cool classic awesome dan channeling his inner mahavishnu the boy can flat play i'll tell you that he's got a creative mind and um he's adding real strings to his record and you, you can see it all in the video it's just great see i can never afford real strings I would love to put real strings on some of my shit, but I just, it's expensive. Man, real strings is when, is what separates a lot of records from being average to being amazing. Like, remember that Shelby Lynn record, I Am Shelby Lynn, that Bill Patrol made a million years ago? Man, I listened to that the other day, and that opening track, Your Lies Won't Leave Me Alone, fucking. That would have just been a normal song. But those fucking strings that he put on there are so awesome. Check that track out. Your Lies by Shelby Lynn. Oh my God. It turns an ordinary song into the most epic shit you ever heard in your life. Dangerous sounding strings. Um, raucous. Um, just fantastic. Not sweet orchestral strings it's more like fucked up fuck you strings you know which is pretty cool in my opinion they don't always have to be movie soundtrack friends um so uh what else that's about it for today um loving this old stratocaster that i was fortunate enough to get from my dear old friend jeffrey moore and uh, you guys can tell I love this guitar, man. I've had a ton of people offer to buy it and everything, but that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna have to buy this one at the estate sale. However, you know, since I've been 15 years old, uh, 14 or 15, I've been dreaming about one car that I always wanted. Um, and ever since I've, literally, since I've, 40 years I've been talking about uh, 67 GTO, Signet Gold, 400 automatic convertible with black interior. That's what I've always wanted. And, uh, you know, I see them, and they're expensive. And um, But yesterday I made the move and sold one of my prized guitars and bought that car. And uh, it's not here yet. Um, it should be here in a week or so. And... Um, I'm excited about it. You know, you got to, yeah, it's crazy, Larry. But you know what? We got to do stuff like this while we while we still got a chance, you know. We're, get, we're not getting any younger. And if you have always had a dream about something that you always really wanted, even if it is just a serial, a, a silly material possession, just do it, man. Fuck it. You know, I looked at this amazing guitar I sold and I thought, I love this guitar, but it's not going to bring me the kind of joy that driving around in a 67 GTO with my kids is going to bring me. So I decided to do it. And um, I'll show you a video of that when it gets here. Mm, but man, I found a really nice one, all original, from this sweet old guy in uh, Pennsylvania. And man, this car is painfully original. All oh, the original numbers matching, paperwork and shit. Nice car. Um, it should be it should be fun. And uh, that's it for today. I'm gonna show you this video of Dan. You're gonna dig it. Have a great week, friends.
Please see you later.